Hi, I'm Chris Potts. This video is part of our unit on building effective distributed word representations for semantics. The focus of this lecture is on achieving unsupervised word sense disambiguation. Let's start by identifying the challenge posed by word sense ambiguities for vector space models of meaning of the sort we've been developing. Here's a small, slightly awkward corpus containing six documents, each one with a slightly awkward sentence. The conceit of this example is that documents 1, 2, and 3 involve the word crane in the sense of a large bird, whereas documents 4, 5, and 6 involve the word crane in the sense of a large piece of industrial equipment. The challenge comes when we apply our usual methods for converting corpora like this into matrices of token counts. Here's the resulting matrix, and it looks like we've completely destroyed the, dis the word sense ambiguity that we just observed for crane by collapsing all of its tokens down into a single vector. But all is not lost. There's a simple method we can use for recovering the word sense ambiguity using unsupervised methods. Let's begin with the word of interest, it's crane. It occurs in six documents in our corpus. And then we can cluster those documents by their column vectors using some clustering algorithm or other. And let's suppose that things are working well in the sense that having applied the clustering algorithm to those six documents, we end up with two clusters, the first containing documents 1, 2, and 3, and the second containing documents 4, 5, and 6. That corresponds directly to the ambiguity that we observed in the underlying corpus. Now for convenience, let's give these clusters indices or names. And then we can start building the vocabulary for our new vector space by splitting crane into two types, crane 0 and crane 1 and splitting its original vector into two based on the clustering that we just created. This process continues for the entire vocabulary, so let's move to wor the word bird. It occurs in three documents. Again, we cluster those documents according to our clustering algorithm, and let's suppose, for the sake of the example, that the clustering algorithm puts document one alone in the cluster and document two and three in a separate cluster. Again, we give those clusters indices to keep track of them, and then we expand the vocabulary according to the two senses that we just created. And this process continues for each word in the original matrix. So we continue to expand our vector space. The result is a larger vector space, and if all is well, the new space will encode the word sense ambiguities that are attested in the original underlying corpus. The method I just described is implemented in the code lab associated with this unit. The implementation uses a clustering algorithm called affinity propagation, which is a nice algorithm to use here because it doesn't presuppose that all the words determine the same number of clusters. Applying the method results in this larger matrix, and at least respect with, the, with respect to the target word crane, things look great. The algorithm created two senses for it, and those senses seem to correspond to the original division that we saw in the underlying corpus texts. The algorithm also created ambiguities for the rest of the vocabulary, so it said bird, fly, equipment, and hoist each have two senses, and tall has three senses. This might be a cause for concern, but let's set that aside for now. Here in this new table, I focused on the first sense of crane, crane zero, and I ordered the entire vocabulary based on its distance from crane zero. So the closest item is one sense of the word bird. Uh, the next closest cluster includes the next other sense of bird, both senses of fly, and one of the senses of tall. And then finally, equally and maximally far apart in the vector space are all these words that seem to be associated with equipment plus the other two senses of tall. So this seems clearly to be a bird sense of the word crane. Here's the other sense we created, crane one. Its nearest neighbor is one sense of the word equipment. Uh, the next group contains the other sense of the word equipment, both senses of the word hoist, and two senses for the word tall. And then again, equally and maximally far apart in the vector space are all these words that seem to have something to do with birds. 
So it looks like the method captured the target ambiguity and also made, in some sense, a distinction between what it means to be tall for a bird and what it means to be tall for a piece of industrial equipment. By way of wrapping up, just a few remarks. First, there are two obvious areas for improvement. The most important is the clustering algorithm. It is the primary mechanism by which we identify word sense ambiguities on this method, so improvements here could have a large impact on outcomes. Second, the method seems likely to create ambiguities where there are none. However, we might hope that these words are sufficiently close together in the resulting space that we can collapse them back together via a simple threshold or the like. This would take the pressure off of the clustering algorithm to find exactly the right number of clusters. I also want to mention some inspiring literature. Uh, this paper by Schutze is a classic for using unsupervised methods to identify and characterize word sense ambiguities. It really provides the guiding intuitions for the method I described here. Uh, Riesinger and Moody developed the method. Their paper is worth studying because their version of the method is more powerful than the simplified one that I presented. And Wong, Socher, Manning, and Eng apply Riesinger and Moody's method in the context of neural word representations, which we'll study later in this unit.